And let's bring in political analyst Steve Shigeras here in Washington to help us digest all of this. Uh, Steve, we heard there from that Russian official saying the Trump administration had conditions. We know that one of those conditions was bringing China into the talks. That, of course, didn't happen. Uh, Biden is agreeing to an extension based on the uh, previous existing terms, if you will. Do you sense he'll manage to work more closely with Moscow as a result? Uh, I, I don't think that's the road they're going down. Uh, Biden had a conversation with Putin this week. They made it sound like they're going to have a very tough approach toward Russia. Now, keep in mind, um, there is some that thought that the Trump administration, aside from former President Trump, actually had a tough approach with Russia. But the problem that the Biden, the Biden folks saw was that, and, and even some Republicans, was that Trump outwardly uh, was too deferential to Putin, uh, was not critical enough uh, publicly. Uh, and I think you're going to see the Biden administration and Biden himself change that. Uh, that that and working with our allies, Trump with his America First approach uh, is not something that Biden's going to continue. I think you're going to see Biden working, especially with European allies, uh, to try to deal with uh, Russia, uh, uh, to have a tough approach toward Russia moving forward. I want to stay with foreign policy. Uh, some of Biden's uh, nominations and appointments suggest his administration is perhaps more willing to engage with Iran. Uh, we saw the suspension of weapon sales to some of Tehran's adversaries, for example. Uh, what should we, are we expecting, do you think, an, an about face uh, in this administration versus the last one? Oh, absolutely. Keep in mind that the the Iran deal was done by the Obama administration, and, and that was one of uh, things that one of the things that Biden worked very hard on. And so they were uh, dismayed to see that Trump uh, basically broke that deal. And so you're going to start seeing uh, Biden working with Iran uh, and 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 trying to uh, change the course over the last four years in dealing with Iran moving forward. Biden's background, of course, is uh, legislative. What does it tell you that he's planning to? forge ahead with that $1.9 trillion relief package without Republican lawmakers? And, and do you think this sets the stage for four years of largely divisive partisan politics? Absolutely. There's no question. Uh, and I think that stage has been set. It was set years ago. And Biden, I think, you know, tried to come into office with his speech on Inauguration Day by, by speaking about unity. Part of that is to try to tone down the rhetoric. Uh, and part of that is to try to get Republicans to work with him. But it's very clear that uh, this move to, to move forward with the $1.9 trillion, look, there's a lot of stuff in that proposal that Republicans just don't agree with and never will agree with. And so they're starting at a point where they're not going to get enough Republican support to move that forward. So they're going to try to force it ahead using some other procedural moves. Uh, and so uh, that's going to be taken, I think, by Republicans as an effort not to be bipartisan, not to work with Republicans. And we'll, so we'll see long term how that works out. But I think the stage is set uh, for this to, to be to see Democrats, Republicans, Biden versus Republicans. Uh, they're going to be knocking heads, I think, for the next four years. Steve, President Biden has wrapped up his first full week in office. He's already faced some criticism, even from The New York Times, uh, for signing a slew of executive actions. Uh, do you think that's an effective way for him to lead? Well, it's not really an effective way for any president to lead, but uh, the last uh, few presidents have, have done a lot with executive actions. The problem with executive actions is that they're very limited in scope. And if you want to have make, you know, you want to have broad change in this country, you've got to have Congress and the legislature pass laws that the president can sign. Those are more broadly uh, uh, applied. Uh, but, you know, they're looking at it, and Biden promised this shouldn't be a surprise to people. He promised throughout the campaign that if he got elected, that there was a laundry list of executive actions that uh, that Donald Trump signed that he would, would reverse. And so he's just going through that. I think uh, what, what the New York Times and others are saying is, look, there's got to be a better way to govern than each president coming in and signing their own executive actions. Let's figure out a way to get the president and Congress to work together to pass laws to have more broadly applied uh, uh, laws than just uh, the president signing executive actions over and over again.